Hello, well today I'm sewing up a leather bag. I've got my sections of leather and I'm sewing them all together to get a bag shape. And I thought I'd give you a few sort of hints and tips along the way as I do this. Now, if you sew by hand, it will be very similar sorts of things that will apply. I'm gonna be using a sewing machine, so you can see how I do it with a machine. But as I say, same sort of principles. Um, if you've done fabric sewing before, then I think it's a lot easier. If you haven't done any fabric sewing, uh, watch, you'll soon get the idea. But you have to sort of turn stuff inside out, wrong side out, and things like that. And the first time you think, what? And your mind's trying to work it all out. But it, once you've done it once or twice, it's not bad at all. Anyway, we'll get going. So what I've got here at the moment is I've got a, a back wall of a bag and I've got a divider. Now, the divider I have just glue tacked in place and I'm just going to go around it with a few stitches just to tack the sort of divider onto the leather. So it's, otherwise you end up with a lot of layers and everything starts to shift. So I will just got a couple more to do on this. I'm just doing literally a few stitches back and forwards just to tack it into shape. Gluing alone would probably work in most cases. This is if you like a little bit of belt and braces but these little like tacking stitches won't notice as they'll be hidden in seams. It's just a way of stopping everything sliding around. Yeah the machine I'm using, I'll bring the camera around in a second, is a cylinder arm which I find very useful for bag making. Now you could perfectly happily do all of this on an ordinary flatbed sewing machine. As long as it's a strongish one for leather work, you'll be fine. It doesn't have to be a cylinder arm. Where the cylinder arm really obviously comes into its own is where you're doing tubular objects and you can put them over the actual arm of the machine. So, sidewalls next. So, <laughs> I've been pegging the side wall of this bag onto the back of it. So it's like inside out a bit at the moment. I'm using little plastic clips, little patchwork makers, little plastic clips to clip the sides of this bag onto the back of it. And you can see it's sort of, I'm working with a bag inside out because that's obviously going to be the exterior of the bag. And what it currently if you like the exterior, is going to be the interior. So this is where it gets a bit confusing turning things out. But I'm going to sew this seam around to get the side wall onto the back of the bag. And I find if I use lots and lots of clips, it holds it all together, makes it a lot easier. Now I do two rows of stitching, because I always like things to be really strong. And it's also quite useful because your first row of sewing can be like a tacking stitch, although it's actually a lot stronger. I've got my machine set up. I have a little lever, foot rest lever here to lift up the sewing foot. I have to be careful when I start the sewing not to sew the flap of the bag. So that is firmly tucked away. So I'm gonna put in my first line of stitches So I back tack quite a few. And then I go forwards. So all the time I'm carefully just making sure that my seams are still lining up properly. The machine I'm using, it's like a medium duty leather sewing machine. So it's um, best way of describing, you don't need a real sort of mighty chunker of a workhorse to sew through leather. I mean, I'm going through in places here, like three layers of leather and a layer of canvas, which is quite a challenge for any machine. But if it's an industrial sewing machine like this one, it will manage it quite happily. One could sort of 
get an even larger industrial machine that can take thicker threads, bigger needles than this one, but for bag making it's not necessary. If I was doing axe sheaves and all that sort of stuff, then yes, I'd want a, a really chunky solid cylinder arm machine, but this one is perfectly good. Every now and again, I just do a few back stitches. So I've got a lever here, sends my machine backwards. And I just go backwards and forwards. And then if the thread breaks at any point, I've got a very firm anchor point. So carrying on, coming to a corner. When I get to a corner, I need to take my time and still keep that alignment. This is where the edge guide is very helpful. So the machine has a bolt on edge guide. The machine is driven with what's called a servo motor. So a lot of the older machines have clutch motors, but the servo motors, I personally think they're a bit more controllable. I'm dropping my pegs now, but I'll find that one in a minute. They're also quieter and more energy efficient. They're often described as energy efficient motors. So I'm now coming down a long straight and again, just do a few back stitches now and again to keep it in case it were to ever break. It wouldn't all unravel. It would only unravel as far as the back stitch. stitches are going in fine. Coming to another corner, so it's slowing down a bit. It's important to really, I mean it gets easier with practice, but I always used to practice on scraps before I did a lot of machine sewing and I found that was well worth doing. This is always a tricky bit where you have to be very careful you don't stitch the flap. And all of it's a level of pulling away at you. Right, you go to anchor at the top. Right, that's my first outer seam done. So that's everything nicely held. I will do another seam now next to it running parallel and that would be closer in that would become the finished seam you could say oh, why, why aren't I using a double needle foot or something and um, the reason is sometimes when you do your first row of stitching you're going around a corner it doesn't go entirely straight your second lot of seaming is your chance to get things absolutely perfect as it happens this one's gone I don't know if you'll see that on camera, but it's gone nice and smoothly. But um, if it hadn't, I'd be able to correct it at this point and go back over it. So another seam to go in next. The other thing I should just say is when I make these bags, I do thin down the seams a bit. Um, I use a skiving machine to take the edge of the lever down. And the reason I do that is that the seams sit more happily the, bulk, the bag doesn't get all bulky. If I didn't skive the edges, you'd get very bulky, crude looking seams. So that's why skiving with all bags is done. It's thinning the edges, basically. You just take a bit off, but it helps the seam to sit nice and tight and close. So I will carry on with the next seam, and then I'll show you how I do the, the front piece. These edge guides have little screws that you can turn and just tighten up. They flip up and down out of the way, but they're very useful if you're trying to get a good edge. It's got a little roller wheel that the lever can go along and it acts as a little guide. I'm just gonna check my thread because I'm not certain how much I've got left in my bobbin. Still a fair bit in there actually, that's fine. Just you don't want to, if you're doing a neater line of stitching, you don't want to be running out of thread halfway through. So it's worth keeping an eye on that. Okay, next lot of seaming to go in. 
So I've put the camera behind the machine now to give you a different view and I've just been adjusting this edge guide which it swings up and down but it's very useful for getting a nice distances. So I've just checked my bobbin that there's plenty of thread. And I'll get these initial stitches in. So I'm pressing quite firmly against the edge guide. Now this machine has what is called a compound feed. So feed dog underneath pulls the lever through, the needle walks and pulls the lever through and the foot also drops down, keeps it tight and pushes through. Again, I'll go backwards every now and again just to keep everything nice. It makes corners easier if you have a smaller stitch size. Again, I'm manipulating this lever with my thumb as I go around the corner. Once I get out of the corner, I'm going to again go backwards, got a little lever here, go forwards again, just again, going backwards and forwards. It just means if your stitches were to break or fray, they'll only fray back to where you've gone backwards and forwards. So if you like, it limits the damage. I'll do another at the middle point here. Do another one there. Now, as I say, you could be doing this on a flatbed machine. I, I like the fact that I can hold the workpiece at quite a good angle. So I, I do like the cylinder machine for this. This is a clone machine. I find the clones these days, if you get a decent one, they seem very good. Okay, I'm just going back a little bit, keep going forwards. So I'm double seaming, I double seam all my bags for maximum strength. Again, coming up towards where the flap is, I don't want to pierce that, so if you stop, it's best to try and stop the needle down because then it won't all fall apart. I'm just going to manipulate that into place. And coming up to the end. I've geared this sewing machine down with pulleys. I've popped up a film about how I've done that. Right, that's all nicely back sewn on itself. Oops extract. So hopefully you can see that a bit. I've got the, that's going to be the interior pocket. I'll widen this out a second. Oops. So that will be the interior pocket. That will become the outside of the bag. This all gets very strange. So what I'm going to do next is clip on the front panel and then I'll be able to sew that. So I'm just pegging the front panel into position and what I do I have a couple of little like guide marks so I've put a little silver pen marker so I use these little leather silver pens uh, and I have a couple of little marks and I put them on there so everything lines up. And what I'm doing now is I'm doing a loose pegging around the corner and I'll follow that up with a tighter pegging where I'll use more pegs in just a minute. But if I can get it loosely into position, I know that I've got everything in roughly the right place. So I'm just using these pegs. I'll put a link uh, down below, so in the description about where you can get these pegs from and I'll also put a little link for the 
silver marker pen as well. So at the moment, and this is the weird thing, one's got the interior of the bag facing outwards. So the what will become the outside of the bag at the moment is all inside. It is really odd this, but you end up turning the whole thing inside out. If you've done fabric sewing, as I say, I think this will be very obvious second nature to you. But if you haven't, then obviously it does seem, when you first do it, a bit weird. You're sort of working with a bag that's the wrong way out, basically. But it does work. Well, I hope it does. <laughs> there we are. So I'm just popping these clips along to hold this in position. A few more to go. You do need a lot of clips, so it's worth, you know, they're very cheap to buy. It is worth buying 50 or so, 100 or so, so you've got a nice supply. They seem quite robust, they do last well. Right, I'll try and show you what we've got now. At the moment, what we've got is the inside of the bag is outside, and then the, what will become the outside of the bag is all inside. So I'm going to now, similar fashion as to before, sew this seam. Now you may be thinking, oh, what are these flappy bits at the top all about? I've left these longer simply as I will trim them once it's all sewn, and that way I get them the exact right height. But that's why they're there flapping about. So back to the machine. Here's a little walk round view of what's going on. So I'm now going to be sewing the front of the bag on. Put the camera the other side now of the machine. So still behind the machine, same as the operator. But I've put it so that it's the other side behind, it gives you just a different view. Starting off going backwards. Send it out a couple of times. Trim off the little thing, I'll trim that properly later. And then work along as before. So I'm now putting in the second seam, which is going to be the outer seam. and just going back and forwards a few times for nice added strength. So the lever's now being held very nicely by that first seam. There's probably about four millimeters between the two seams, five, four, four millimeters probably, something like that. And of course this outer seam is going into even thicker leather as the sky itself is tapered. double seamed on both the back and the front. I will now turn the bag inside out. So just before I turn the bag inside out, I'm going to trim off any loose threads. And then what I'll do is I will just trim these top pieces so that they level up. So these are the side walls which I left extra long. Uh, may need a little bit more trimming in a minute, but it gets them down and out of the way. Same on this side. There we are. 
that edge will obviously all get stained in time to make it blend in with everything else. So now comes the great turning inside out. So everything at the moment is on the wrong side in. And you just have to sort of try and push it through. It's never terribly easy, but you just take your time, you manipulate it round and try not to mark things get it to come through. It always seems a bit impossible at first and suddenly it begins to come. Like a birth. <laughs> I don't think ladies watching will probably say that's very comparable. Quite a bit of pressure. It's nearly there. So if you take something with a rounded edge, you can go along these seams and you can just manipulate them all out. Get them turning out nice and firmly going along. And you'll find your bag will suddenly get a nicely defined bag shape. It's worth doing this and taking the time to go along and push those seams under a bit of pressure like that helps all the stitches settle nicely. There we are. So I was just using the wooden knob there. Same on the back lock. It's a lovely lever this. Oh uh, yeah, that's now standing a bit more bag like so there'll be an upper catch to go on that would be going riveted on there so you get a nice latch which is a one-handed quick release latch side binders I need to rivet in I'll put a washer behind those and I rivet them a leather washer so each side that will keep the top nicely in a nice ring covering top there and inside it's got the nice phone pocket, pen pockets. I'm going to make a solid base. Again, it's really just for people who want to use it for heavy goods. It gives it a bit more body in the bag. And obviously the back here takes the laptop quite happily, which is obviously what I wanted to do with this slightly bigger version. So it really does go in very happily. There is also a zip sort of interior pocket here as well, which obviously could take valuables. And then there'll be the straps. With the nice original Conway loops as well, which get clipped onto the back. And there's a nice padded shoulder strap. So there's sits comfortably on your shoulder. So nearly there, a bit more work. Do like these, they do take a lot of work though. Um, but there you are, I think they're worth it. So they do look awesome. <laughs> okay, so there you are. Bag stitched up. A uh, bit more work I say to do on that bag, but it's nearly there. Hope you found that one useful. Really, I just wanted to show you to you know, make a bag, you have to sort of think slightly reversing. And it's a case whenever you're sewing up a bag, you sew it sort of the wrong side out and then you twist it in on itself. Anyway, <laughs> thanks so much for watching and see you in the next film.